The Tunnels of Terror update for Back for Blood brought in a ton of new mechanics, and I'm seeing lots of questions about all of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through every single one of them. And I'm going to show you how they work. And I'm going to show you some advanced things to know about them that you probably wouldn't understand just looking at it on the surface. Okay? So let's just get straight into it here. Also, I'll have them chaptered in the description down below. So if there's one specific thing you're very curious about, you can just click straight to that chapter. So let's start with the cards and how you get them, okay? A really easy way to see the cards and where you unlock them is to go to your supply lines. And on the right-hand side of the screen, what you're going to see is the Skull Totem Trap. This is how you get the new Tunnels of Terror cards. Now, the way you unlock Skull Totem points is you go into the tunnels and then find the Skull Totems and then escape with the Skull Totems. And then once you've accumulated enough Skull Totem points, you can come to this area and then unlock stuff. This Skull Totem track refreshes on the hour. And when it refreshes, it always starts with a card and the card is always two Skull Totem points. So that means you go into the tunnels, find two Skull Totems, escape, you got yourself a whole brand new card. So what that means is since if you go ahead and you take a look at your decks here, a really easy way to see all of the different cards is click under training decks and then go to filters and then go to tunnels of terror. You can see all the cards that were included in the tunnels of terror update. Since there were 12 cards included, that means you only need 24 skull totem points to unlock every single card in the game. I know it's really easy to feel like when you look at the supply lines and go, oh my God, all this stuff's so expensive and all I want is the cards. This is going to take forever. Don't worry about it. You only need 24 points. And again, it always refreshes with a card. So in my case here, I have four points in the top right hand corner. Stealthy Passage is only two. I can buy it. Now I'm down to two in the top right hand corner. I have Stealthy Passage unlocked for my online campaigns. Also, one pro tip regarding the Skull Totem points. If you are having trouble finding Skull Totems in the hives, go ahead into your cards as long as we're talking about cards and equip a little card here called Weapon Scavenger because the Skull Totem is a weapon, so it will highlight through walls in the tunnels. This will help you start to learn where these things spawn, okay? And now before we get too deeply into the Skull Totems, let's start talking about the tunnels because that's where the Skull Totems exist. Now, the way you get into the tunnels is they are scattered about many of the different maps in Back for Blood, and they can spawn in multiple locations on those maps. If you happen to find one, which you can usually find one because you'll hear it, it sounds like a screaming in the distance. Ren said it sounded like zombie whales are making whale calls in the distance, and I kind of agree with him. <laughs> You'll find these things that are purple little mass on the ground, and then you just go walk up to them, stand on them, and after a few seconds, you'll go into the tunnel. Now, once you enter the tunnel, that's going to end the level you were on, and you are now in a new level, which is the tunnel that you were selected for. So that could be Brood Layer or The Cut, or 300 Below. There's seven different levels. Now, something to know is once you come back out of these tunnels, you are going to start the next level in the campaign. So if you were on 1-1, one, one, then you go into the tunnels, you complete the tunnel, you're going to come back out into 1-2. Now, once you're in the tunnels, there's going to be specific cards for the tunnels. The Skull Totems is going to be one of the cards. This is the whole point of you being in the tunnels, arguably, is that you're trying to find these Skull Totems and get out. There's also cards that are unique to the tunnels, and I believe one of them is Cave In which we have right in front of us here. So rocks can fall from the ceiling. And then once you get your corruption cards, what you'll notice here is, ooh, wow. You actually get to pick another one of your cards when you're on veteran. That's really interesting. I was doing this on No Hope. I didn't see this before, but this is a good topic to discuss here. Share the wealth is not going to work in the tunnels. Fresh bandage is not going to work in the tunnels. The safe room cards, they do not proc when you're in the tunnels. So what that means is you might want to consider other cards, like maybe money grubbers if you're going to be going in the tunnels a lot. Bounty Hunter, I'm not sure yet, but that might be a card that refreshes when you're in the tunnels. But again, Share the Wealth isn't going to. Okay? But now on the topic of Weapon Scav here, finding Skull Totems, let's go ahead and click it so you can see it. Now, when you load in, you're into a, what looks like a safe room. You have a vendor, but when you go into the shop, what you'll notice is you cannot buy upgrades. Okay? So... As you're seeing here, you have a shop, but you're missing a bunch of the safe room-esque elements. Reason why you can't buy upgrades is because if you found a tunnel, a tunnel, a tunnel, by the time you reach 1-4, you know, before the first checkpoint in Act 1, you could probably already have multiple sets of purple items. So, that's why that's not included in the shop here. Also, one other tip for the tunnels, you see how I have a toolkit equipped? <laughs> you're not going to be using a toolkit while you're down here. So, there's no dang point in carrying one. Going to flip that out. So let's talk about a really important mechanic with the tunnels here. We have all these different webbing areas that we can remove. And what you'll notice on the other side of this webbing is this ladder. Ladders are a big deal in this section of the game because they communicate what's going on to you. This yellow ladder, if you see one that's all busted to heck, that means you can't go up once you go past it. 
So if I drop down here, we're not getting back up here. So these are kind of like checkpoint-ish areas. So make sure you got all the things you want before you drop down, okay? Now, some of these tunnels might whip around and you might be able to get back in some areas, but typically this means once you're going down, you're not coming back up. So make sure you got what you need. One thing to note when you're in these tunnels is these things. You can actually ping them. If a horde starts, these are going to spawn a lot of things at you. So you might want to look up and take some of these out. So let's begin talking about the skull totems themselves. As you go through these tunnels, you'll find them as you explore. And what you'll see is Weapon Scav's actually highlighting this for me over here, which is really, really nice. So once you find a skull totem, all you gotta do is pick it up. Now it's yours. Now, if you find multiple skull totems, you can stack skull totems on top of this one. So now let's talk about these warped chests because I feel like these are really stressing people out, but it's a really easy thing to handle if you understand it. So these warped chests here, what they do is these are the unique loot boxes that you find within the tunnels. And when you open one up, a couple of things are gonna happen. One, a bunch of items are gonna come out, but two, there's usually a negative effect that comes with it. And what you'll see is I just took a lot of trauma damage. I took 20 trauma damage, which really hurts. But there's a really easy way to counter that, and I'll show you that at the next chest. But something to know about all these items that come popping out of here. This is where you're going to find your legendary items. It doesn't look like I got one here, but what you should also be doing is picking apart through all of these weapons that you found because sometimes they will spawn with a legendary attachment, a unique legendary attachment. So make sure you just comb through everything. Maybe you'll get lucky, maybe you won't, but just know that this is the way that you accumulate your legendary stuff. And now right here is one of these locations I'm telling you about where the broken ladder exists. So if you go down, you're not climbing back up this thing you're dropping down. But yeah, also I mean, simultaneously, one of those areas that if you do drop down here, you can weasel your way all the way back around. Some maps are more forgiving about this than others. Just don't, just make sure you don't forget to bring your skull totem with you. This is what you're working for. So pay attention to that thing. It's really easy to drop it and forget about it. And these things are just so strong. Like, look at this. <laughs> They're ridiculously powerful. <laughs> in my mind, melee has gone up a lot in value simply because skull totems are so strong and you want to be able to have somebody on your team who's really good at swinging this sucker around because it's an absolute world ender it's as strong as bob's arm in a lot of ways and that's a really strong melee weapon also for you melee users you can punch and you can use your knife while holding the skull totem which is a really big deal because what you might notice is if i want to go ahead and flip over to my hatchet and start swinging like that well then i drop the skull totem so combat knife is going to go really well with the skull totems if you want to mix up your attacks that you're doing Oh, look it, there's a skull totem that is highlighted over there. Weapon scab's really nice for this. You could have walked right by that, right? Okay. So now let's talk about how we combine these items. So what you can do, if you want to, is you can have multiple this people tribe. on the team carrying these skull totems around, right? You see how I just picked up another one and it's a, it's a brand new skull totem? I know it's a little dark in here, but what you can do if you have one person who wants to carry it around is you can stack these together. So I picked this up and you'll see I just stuffed a skull on here and now I got two skulls on my skull totem. So don't be afraid to stack these things up. And now if you take a look, well, bam, well, bam. And it's going to hit presumably even harder than it was before. So now we have ourselves another warp chest and pay close attention because there is a way to counter that 20 trauma that you take from these warp chests. It's really simple. You go ahead. Actually, I already have temporary health, but the way you do that is you put temporary health on your character. Ta-da. And then you open up the warp chest. You see how my max capacity is 65? Well, if I take trauma, that's going to go down. But what you'll see here, once I open up this chest, is it doesn't go down. Really easy way to counter the trauma from these is just make sure you have temporary health. And you can get that via a group therapy pulse with overheal, which we'll talk about overheal in a bit. You can get that with Vanguard. You can just use pills. I mean, I guess in the case of mom, you could just down someone on your team. <laughs> we'll see, because mom got reworked. So... That's an easy way to do it. Now, something to keep in mind while you're in the tunnels is you do have the potential to find this bad boy here, the inner layer. So the tunnels have tunnels in them. <laughs> you can go even deeper. Now, I don't want to show you too much about the inner layer because I want you to experience it for yourself, but it's very cool. Pay attention to see if you find it. And if you do, think about going in it because if you thought the rewards inside of the, the initial tunnel were cool, well, it can get even better inside of the inner layer. Another cool part about the inner layer is that there's an additional set of skull totems down there. So if you got your two or three from the first area, well, you can go ahead and get three more down in the inner layer. But if you don't find yourself an inner layer and you just want to escape the old fashioned way, just find yourself a yellow ladder reaching up out of the tunnel. You'll find these scattered throughout the map. There's several locations of where you can escape, by the way. Don't feel like you have to go all the way into the deepest depths of the tunnel to get out. 
If you find a yellow ladder going up, it'll say, hey, I'm an exit, and then you can leave that way. So now let's dive into how Team Overheal works and how Team Bolstered Health works, because I think people are getting those confused. So, Team Overheal is a mechanic that gets unlocked when you have Well Rested on your team. It says plus 20% Team Overheal. Okay, so what is Overheal? What it does is it takes the amount of health that would have been wasted and turns it into temporary health. What do I mean by wasted? Let me show you here. I have this Molotov. I'm going to walk into it and it's going to hurt. So let's go ahead and take a look at my med kit here. My med kit heals for 93 HP, according to what the tooltip says, right? So if I were to go ahead and heal myself for 93 HP before this patch, you'll see that I can't because I only have about 35 HP that I can heal until I'm at my max, right? Because I'm at a max of 113 HP because I took some trauma damage. So now I'm going to go ahead and use this med kit and you'll see how overheal kicks in. So take out the med kit, use some healing. And what you'll notice is it actually get a decent chunk of temporary health on top of that. And that's because of the team overheal. Also, another thing that helped contribute to the amount of temp health I got is antibiotic ointment. This card was bugged in a previous patch. But now, every single time you use a medical accessory, you get additional temporary health. So there's a bunch of things that are helping boost up your temporary health. Very cool. And now let's talk about Team Bolstered Health, because this is a mechanic that is unlocked with Charisse, or if you use the Fit as a Fiddle card. So with Charisse here, it says plus 25% Team Bolstered Health. And Bolstered Health and Overheal do complement each other, which is why I think it gets a little confusing for folks. So, so allow me to go ahead and show how it works inside of a match here. So if you take a look in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see there's kind of a purple outline over the top of my health bar, and that's your bolstered health gauge. And all that bolstered health is, is more temporary health capacity. So if you are at your max HP, then suddenly you can have more than your max HP, but it's only gonna be temporary health. And that's what bolstered health is. So if you go ahead and take a peek here, I can use my pills right now. And you'll see my bolstered health went up so I'm at 169 of 135 HP. That's because Bolstered Health goes over the top of your regular HP. And what's really nice about Bolstered Health is it's temporary health. So you get all those trauma prevention benefits that come with temporary HP. Bolstered Health is awesome. Charisse is awesome. And now something to note, which you'll see here, is I have temporary health that has gone over my trauma, but I'm not kicked in to my Bolstered Health yet. Okay, Bolstered Health kicks in after you've reached your max capacity. Okay, so it goes, heal your regular health, heal into your trauma health, then go into your bolstered health. Okay? And just as an example here, healing with meds, it went into my original health, and then into my trauma health. And then, once I've eclipsed my trauma health bar, it starts going into my bolstered health bar. So now let's talk about armor in the game. Armor spawns in when you have Sharice in the game. If you go ahead and you take a look, the Sharice card here, it says that... Armor pieces shot off or ridden have a chance to become makeshift armor, but also she makes it so armor shows up as a world spawn. Now, to go a little bit deeper in on the shooting armor off of things, that means if you shoot armor off of a mutation, off of an ogre, but also, really importantly, if you shoot the helmets off of armored ridden, armored common ridden. So on Handyman, Charisse is going to be really, really nice. So what does armor do? How does it work? Let's get into it. So, you can just pick up armor when you find it. Picking up armor is not exclusive to Sharice. Anybody on the team can pick up armor, so you should split it up. And what you'll notice in the top, or in the bottom left-hand corner, I have a little orange icon next to my portrait now. And you can have multiple stacks of armor. I believe you can have up to four stacks of armor. So, how does armor work? Let me show you exactly how it works. It makes it so you can take a really big hit from anything. And not take any damage. That's armor for you. So if you get smucked by a tall boy, you get exploded by an exploder. You take a really big hit from friendly fire, like a sniper behind you. It's going to block all the damage, but it consumes the armor. And now when I said that armor blocks a really big chunk of damage from anything, I meant anything. <laughs> okay? So feel free to go for a ride here with Cerise's armor from an ogre grab, and then you can just fly like an eagle. <laughs> One other thing to know about armor, when you're shooting it off of Ridden, it is not a one-to-one -one ratio. If you shoot a helmet off, that doesn't mean you're automatically going to get a piece of armor. There's a chance for an armor piece to spawn if you shoot armor off of something. So now let's talk about weapon unbolting, because this is a really exciting part of the update. Now, you may have heard about the Weaponsmith card, which allows you to unbolt your weapons in the wild to remove attachments from your gun. But to be clear, you don't have to be out 
in the wild or you don't have to have the weaponsmith card in order to unbolt your weapon if you take a peek here all you need to do is have a weapon and be inside of the safe room and then if you go to your menu you'll see this thing that says unbolt attachments so you click that you spend the copper cost 500 by default the weaponsmith can make this number lower but then the gun's unbolted and when the gun is unbolted what you can do is you can just click these and your attachments come right off and you can pick them back up and you can do it again you can pick them back up and you can do it again this is permanent this gun permanently is unbolted it will be unbolted this level the next level the next level for the next gabillion levels this gun is always going to be unbolted you can even drop your gun and then pick it back up it's still unbolted you can drop your gun have your teammate pick it up it's still unbolted an unbolted gun is permanently unbolted so how are you going to use this really however you want if you want to unbolt your main weapon and then you want to let's say i found let's say i had a gray scar and while well, i found a blue scar well i'm going to take my attachments off my gray scar pop them off i'm going to drop this go pick up my new scar got my new scar and then i go put them back on there you go but keep in mind that the new weapon you just picked up is not going to be unbolted so if i go ahead and go pop 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 and then i pick up this bad boy and then i go pop 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 well this one's not unbolted i'd have to re unbolt a new weapon so once you make the shift, you have to unbolt it again, which is one of the use cases where Weaponsmith becomes a little bit more valuable. So something you might be thinking of is, well, maybe it'd be a really good idea for me to just have a weapon that's always unbolted. Maybe my secondary weapon, right? Keep that bad boy unbolted and I can use it whenever I want as just an attachment mule, which I'd agree with. Something to keep in note is that there are two secondary weapons in the game that allow you to carry all four attachments. One is the Magnum that I have here, and the other is the Deagle. Now, the Magnum doesn't let you carry an extended mag, so keep that in mind. But other than that, it can equip pretty much anything it wants. So, ta-da, then ta-da, and then again, I can come over here and rip these bad boys off. And yeah, just do whatever you want. And then since I just ripped those off, well, maybe I want to put them on my M1A. And then, well, I can just go ahead and soak all these bad boys back up so I have them to swip around on something else later. Unbolting is awesome. Now, unbolting stops, I believe, once you open the safe room door. No? Yep, as soon as you open the safe room door, you can't do it anymore. So, if safe room door is open, you better hope you have Weaponsmith on your team as a card, and then you'll be able to continuously unbolt weapons. And it's going to be the same thing. You could be out here, you press tab, that unbolt option is still going to be here then if you have Weaponsmith equipped, and you can just do the same old thing I just showed you in the safe room. And actually, it's been a little bit. Where did that scar go? I don't even remember where it is. This one? Yeah, look, it's still an unbolted thing, and it'll say unbolted attachments. Even if you can't see attachments on the gun because we took them all off, Actually, can I? Oh. That's really nice. I can do this, actually, on PC. Well, that's cute. You just click and drag. Okay, instead of dropping stuff. And this is going to be really nice for you folks that don't want to <laughs> drop your weapons in a random match and you're afraid someone's going to so you know, <laughs> soak them right up. You can just do this instead. Oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> oh, why is my gun shooting? Ah. Okay, that might be a... What? Why? Oh my god, what's happening? Okay, that might be a bug. <laughs> One of the fancy new toys that came in the Tunnels of Terror update is called Stealthy Passage. And this is a card that allows you to disarm door alarms, car alarms, and birds. And the reason why we're covering this is because I think people might be a little confused, especially about the birds thing. <laughs> so, let me show you. So, if you have a car alarm in front of you, you can just walk up to it and disarm it. Keep in mind, I think you need to be at the front of the car to disarm it. So, let's try it. And while you're disarming it... You have this amount of time to go ahead and disarm it. If you don't take any damage during this time, it is no longer alarmed. I can shoot it. You and everybody else on your team got 25 copper apiece. So that's about 100 copper for the team. And ta-da, no more hazard. Pretty cool. This will work on doors, it'll work on cars, but it'll also work on birds. So if I try to sneak up on these birds, something I would recommend with the birds is if you crouch, you won't disturb them quite as much. Don't run at birds, just like you don't run at birds in real life. So just... Yeah, <laughs> and then you can disarm them they'll highlight white and then you can do the bird thing <laughs> and then picture shrek where fiona sings to the birds they explode <laughs> just like that and for some reason somebody shot them real angrily after the fact so that's how you do that with stealthy passage works pretty cool on a bunch of different areas of the map and it's actually a really nice economy card but again it does come with removing your quick slot it is a pretty hefty cost but the card is really awesome so <laughs> pick it it's fun and now we'd be remiss here if we didn't go ahead and show you the new ridden now i can't show you festering ridden because those are you can't control common and swarm but what i can do is i can show you the ripper the urchin and the shredder and tell you what they do so let's start with the ripper 
By the way, I do have a couple of stats on the Ripper, courtesy of Turtle Rock. So let me go ahead and tell you what I know based off of what I was told. So you see the health in the bottom left-hand corner? Ignore that for what I'm about to tell you because I'm going to tell you PVE values. This is a swarm value, okay? Now, the Ripper has 800 HP and it has 250 stumble HP and I believe a recovery rate of about 90 stumble HP per second, okay? Now, if we go ahead and take a look at what the Ripper does, well, the Ripper does this. He spits out a big line of carnage right in front of him. And honestly, in practice, I'm not that afraid of the Ripper. I haven't really been too uh, when I'm dealing with him in a match, but he sure sounds scary and seems scary. Just try not to be in front of that nonsense right there and you'll be fine. Because he spits out a bunch of spikes, and the spikes look like they're going to hit you, but they don't. It's mainly just his little line that he makes. Now, I do think he can cleave and all that at a higher, you know, ferocious or monstrous type of level, but for now, all he does is... And actually, something cool here, I do have this game on PlayStation as well, so I can show you what it looks like when a Ripper's attacking you, so it looks something like this. So now let's move on to the Shredder here. The Shredder's really, really interesting. It's part of the Reeker class, and it can charge like all the other Reekers can. Also, it throws some mean punches, so if you get close enough... Ugh! Ugh! I mean, I guess he doesn't throw mean punches in Swarm, but he throws mean punches in the PvE, so you watch out. And then for the unique feature that the Shredder has, is it has this suck feature. And I think it has a range of about 19 to 20 meters here. We'll do 18 to go ahead and make sure we're safe here. And actually, if I hold right click, you'll see it's about 18 meters. So it's a pretty far distance that you can just yank a <laughs> cleaner all the way to you. And if you want a little bit more context as to just how far that really is, here, let me pull Jim back here. <laughs> where he was and then it was about this far let me make sure i got my 18 meters marked yeah so the shredder could be that far away and then if it does it's it'll pull you right towards him so be careful especially if the shredder is sitting inside of some birds which is the worst feeling ever if the shredder is sitting inside of birds and then pulls you you're in a lot of trouble because you're going to alert those birds. And now as for a shredder and its HP values, I'm getting 450 HP on a shredder, but it also has a pretty beefy stumble HP of 200. So go ahead and keep that in mind when you're trying to stumble these bad boys. They need it. And let's go ahead and show you what it looks like when you beat one of these guys up. What you'll see is they don't explode. Instead, they kind of wobble around and spit stuff all over the place. So very different from the rest of the Reekers, which in my mind might mean that they don't since they're not exploding, they might not call a horde to you since they're not making that big explosion sound. Because Reekers, if they explode next to you, that officially calls a horde. But if exploders or wretches explode next to you, they summon all of the ridden that were just wandering about because it's a really loud sound. But it looks like these guys might not do that. And now on to the urchin. And the urchins are by far the hardest one to deal with for me so far just because they're sneaky. And they have bad intentions. So the urchin kind of looks like a stalker that, you know as Charisse would say, did a porcupine. And what they do is they have these mines. And I thought they were going to lay down mines, but instead what they do is they spit mines and they spit them at targets. Now, you can get a direct hit and then that thing is going on underneath you and you're taking a lot of damage. So in that case, what you should be doing is shooting this thing so it stops hurting you or your team. But something else <laughs> to keep in mind with these mines, keep in mind, is that they bounce. So, pop up. And they bounce pretty far in the PvE section of the game. So... <laughs> Keep that in mind, I suppose. Now, one other thing to know about the urchins is that they have about 200 HP at standard. Now, if you want to go ahead and see all the different values compared to everything else, I'd go ahead and recommend you go to Staddy.net. We stream just about every single night on twitch.tv slash swingpoint. Links in the description, also the top comment if you want to go see me take on No Hope. Also, I'm going to be covering a lot more about all this. I just wanted to get a video out for you guys that covers a lot of the bases of where people are getting confused. But I'm definitely going to be covering stuff on No Hope. Going to be releasing No Hope videos. If you want to see that, make sure you subscribe down below. And if you have found this channel helpful and you want to support the channel just a little bit more, you can go ahead and become a YouTube member by clicking the join button down below. It's like a dollar a month. Supports the channel directly. Makes it so I can keep spending full time working on these videos for you guys. So thank you guys. You guys are awesome. And I'll see you in the next video that we do around here.